Hey everyone, welcome to the Strong Fit Podcast. So I don't have my usual co-host with me. I'm going to explain why. She's in Holland. So why is she in Holland? So we had a, the, the seminar in the US, the two seminars in Pulsebo near Seattle and then in uh, Los Angeles with Coaches Week and everything that I did. And that will be the next, next podcast because <clears throat> this was the new seminar in a way, right? The, the, not necessarily the new format that I'm applying, but the um, how I'm going at it and then I included some movements. I'll explain all this is in the next episode. But first I want to explain what happens with Janina not being able to enter Brazil for the next two weeks because I think the whole situation is explaining the state of the world today. So I want to talk a bit about that. So we are lacking one paper for Janina's re residency here in Brazil, right? We just have to get the, the meeting with the Policia Federal and the second we have that meeting, that's it. So we're not even lacking a paper, we're lacking a number that the meeting will give us. And we knew that going out and we asked the Policia Federal, is that a problem because she's past her uh, tourist thing? It's like, no, 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 it's okay. Explain your situation at the border on the way in. You might pay a fine, but that's okay. You come back in. All right, cool. We go out, we come back. And of course we come back and the guy's like, no, you passed your uh, tourist visa requirements. And we're like, yes, but uh, I have the residency, right? My daughter being Brazilian and we are legally, it's not legally married here, but it's called Union Estable, uh, which means like um, a bit like a civil marriage, I guess you would call it. So basically that we live together uh, legally, officially in Brazil. So that gives us the uh, the same right as if we were married, right? So we like, we have that. She has done all her paperwork to get the residency. We just need that final meeting, right? And uh, like, it's all good. Like the guy told us out, we pay the fine. Like, Let me pay the fine. And he's like, no, you can't pay the fine. And actually he didn't tell me that, the cop in question, because he sent one of the uh, person working for United to tell us, because we arrived from the United flight. And so she's telling me what he's saying. Uh, and because he doesn't want to talk to me, so I get the law, my lawyer on the phone. Uh, he doesn't want to talk to the lawyer. She talks to the lawyer, but she doesn't have the information because everything goes to him, but he's not talking. And so he goes on and on and on and on like that. And four hours later, it turns out, no, he's not going to let Janina in. He never talked to me the entire time outside of when he came, he said, you have to sign that paper. And he's like, if you were in the US, it'd be worse. I'm like, but I'm not American. I'm French and I live here. I have residency here. I'm trying to explain. It does not give a shit. All right. Since, so <clears throat> I can't stay with Janina until her flight four hours, five hours later. They kick me out of the airport saying you gotta leave now. All right. So I leave and then <clears throat> I'm asking how she's going to be treated and everything. So it turns out lady lied to me as well. Uh, she was put in a room, right? Not allowed to get water or food. She has four or five hours to go. She was not allowed to buy water or food uh, and she couldn't even go to the bathroom without closing the door. I understand that at that stage you're a criminal and that's how they treat people who need to be kicked out of the country in those places. I understand that's how the, how the law works. On the way to uh, the flight, they would not even let her buy food for the plane. They just wanted to put her like straight in and they didn't give her the passport until she was at the stop. So I understand like all this is how it is legally done and that it is, and by the way, I'm not blaming Brazil because it's going to be the same thing, whether it's France, Holland, the US or things like that. That is how they treat people, which is my point on this is it's weird to treat her like that since she's going to be back in two weeks because turn out she can come back as a tourist in two weeks and from there we'll do her residency. It's a strange way to, tr to treat someone who's going to come back two weeks later, but they have to follow the rules. I get it. But not letting her buy food on the way to the plane, it's, that's not a rule thing. That's a person thing, right? You know full well that if that person had wanted to, she could have taken an extra minute and a half, let her buy food and be out. Even then, she could have said like, look, let's, let me bring you food. What do you want? Like, give me your, like, I mean, like, yes, the state will not do that, but a person, who's seeing someone in a specific situation, a person would. That did not happen. Okay, that's just step one, by the way. So she gets to Holland and this is where I find the, the situation the most interesting, <laughs> the most interesting. Yeah, we can say the most interesting. So she gets to Holland. First, she gets to Paris in order to go Paris, Holland. When she gets to Paris, they will not let her in Europe. Why? Because she does not have a QR code. 
Right, so we are both fully vaccinated. We have the card from Brazil where the second dose of the vaccine was done uh, a month, over a month ago now. So fully vaccinated, everything is, is fine. This guy's like, yeah, but you don't have a QR code. But she's like, but I have my vaccine card. Does it matter you don't have a QR code? But I can only get the QR code in Europe, right? I can't get it from here. And to them, it doesn't matter because guess what? It's not about the vaccine. It's about obedience. It's about getting the QR code. So the guy let her come through, thank God, otherwise she would have been stuck in Paris and then the nightmare continues because imagine we were arriving from LA. So we do three hours to Houston, 10 hours to Rio. She has five, six hours in a jail cell. Then she's 12 hours to Holland, 11 hours to Paris. And then she would have been stuck in a jail in Paris. Imagine that. So the guy let her through. She comes to Holland and now she cannot do anything. Right? She, she doesn't have a QR code. She cannot do anything. Go to any gym, any restaurant, nothing without a QR code. She has her papers being fully vaccinated in Brazil. It doesn't matter. It's not about vaccination. It's about the QR code. And she's trying to get a meeting to get a QR code. And the person is like, we're busy. She cannot get it till next Wednesday, six days from now. She's going to stay a full week in Holland, not being able to go anywhere, being fully vaccinated because she does not have the QR code. This is why we left Europe, because when I saw curfew, this is what I saw. I knew this shit was going to happen. And this, um, this is not about blaming Holland. That's not what I want the podcast to be. What I want the podcast to be is to explain to you how they are changing you. And we cannot let them do that. We cannot. This, we will for, not never forget about the pandemic, but we will forget, we will go back to normal. What will not be the same is you. Because be careful, do not let them change you into someone who will have to live with the consequences of treating people a certain way. It doesn't take that much <clears throat> to change the course of your life. You might not even notice it, but the way you treat people is the way you'll treat yourself. Trust me, I, you know how much I work with anxiety, depression, and everything. What I saw with the most often with depressed people is that they were very judgmental. Now, are they judgmental of themselves and then others, or others and then themselves, and that's what makes them depressed? It doesn't matter. The point is that the gun that is pointed at other people will point at you, right? Or vice versa. It was the gun, the gun pointed at you, then you point at others. You might want to look at and maybe, it's, by the way, it's probably both, right? It starts one way or another, but it doesn't matter. The gun that you're pointing at other people will point at you at some point. The way you treat people, that gun will point at you at some point. It can change you dramatically. It can change the course of your life because the course of your life is not decided by one or two big events. That is not how this works. It's decided by the thousand small decisions that you take all day long how you treat the homeless people, how you, not even how you talk to them, how you look at them, right? Do not let the system make you treat a people in a way that will change you in a negative way. And this is what's happening right now, for example, in Holland. So I'm sure it's happening everywhere, but I will talk about Holland because this is where Janina is and she's telling me how it's over there, right? So she goes to the gym with her vaccination card from Brazil. And the guy's like, you don't have a QR code. But she's like, but I'm fully vaccinated. It's like, you don't have a QR code. I can't get one. doesn't matter. You don't have a QR code. This is not about vaccination. And they were being very rude about it. Every single time he was like, so where are you from? In the city she was born and raised in, Utrecht. And they were like, well, I'm from here. He's like, no, you're not. Why? Because she acts different. Because she hasn't spoken Dutch in nine months, right? So she's like, oh, you don't live here. He's like, yeah, I can tell you have an accent. Is that why you're talking so slow? Like stuff like that, like they are being so rude to her. And the reason she's being so rude to her is because she doesn't have the QR code, right? If she had the QR code, they'd be, you know, or welcome back, or maybe not, maybe they'd be just as rude to her, but I can tell you something, and the Dutch people are rude. They are not that rude. Prior to the pandemic, this would not happen like that. It'd be a conversation like, hmm, how come you're in Rio, you left? Not this, not the way now, People are being treated. If you don't have the QR code, you're a second grade citizen. It happened, right? And this is not about vaccination because she is vaccinated and she can prove it from the Brazilian stuff. Or you don't believe in the Brazilian vaccination card. And then we can talk about, so if it's another country or is it because it's a third world country? Is that what you're saying about Brazil? Is it not racism? 
we can go that route, that route too, but you see what I mean, right? That's not what it's about. The, the key is, it is, and all that stuff from the government things, that's another thing. What I'm seeing is the effects on people. We have no idea what those lockdowns, what those policies on COVID will do to people. You can tell me it was justified. I'll put it this way. China did the lockdowns, we did the lockdown. China started with a QR code for vaccination, we're doing that. Social credits come next. I, saw, I said that like a year, year and a half ago. Social credits are coming next. That QR code will be kept in a one shape, in some shape or form, right? And you've seen already how people are being treated when they have a QR code or they don't. So when everybody has to have a QR code, what it says on the QR code will change the way people treat you. And by the way, we are agreeing that our personal information is being shared with the guy at the entrance of the restaurant. Right. That's who has our medical history now. And with social credits, that's who will have our, our life history, whether you paid your bills, whether you were in jail before, stuff like that. The dude who's letting you in the movie theater will have, will have your history in front of him. You are, we are agreeing to share our personal history with everybody in society. Am I the only one who think this is fucking nuts? Right, I know I'm not the only one, but t you, know, you know what I mean? Like, and again, like, you're telling me this was necessary to save people? Didn't happen in Sweden the same way, many places different. Like, look at Australia, look at New Zealand. I'm like, exactly, look at Australia and New Zealand. Those are totalitarian states right now in the way they, they deal with people. And I guess that's what scares me the most, is we are taking our lessons from China, but that's not, it's not from China we're taking it. It's from the CCP, from the Communist Party of China. And we are looking at them on how to deal with, uh, with lockdowns and QR codes. And, and, and it's insane, right? And again, we don't even have that conversation because you can't, because you'll be uh, terminated online through the, through the media or, you know, or people that are... I think this is the way to go like they, they and again like whether or not like I see the way the media is behaving right and you can tell they're dying they're not making money the way they're attacking Joe Rogan is absurd uh, like if we context exists like quoting an, uh, a word like the n-word and throwing it as someone as an insult is not the same you know how you know it's not the same is because context matter how do you know context matter because a black person can say the n-word and a white person cannot so that means context matters so we can take that context and expand it to hurling a word as an insult and quoting it is not the same you're telling me we can't quote the word okay that's not something we all agreed on five years ago so you can't blame someone for quoting the world five years ago you can blame someone for saying it as an insult all day long all you want but you know what I mean context matters right so and if you're saying context doesn't matter then no one can say it and we should cancel Richard Pryor there is no end to this like this is that totalitarian state attitude right to this and what does it relate to the situation at hand because that's how it starts right you don't it's not the big thing. It's a thousand little small choices. It's that lady refusing to let Janina get food on the way to the plane. Maybe that person is an asshole. It would have happened any other way. Okay, but if you start to accumulate on everything that you see, you'll know exactly what I want. If the state brings you a certain way, this, you start to have that attitude like, ooh, look at the vaccinated versus unvaccinated thing. It's like unvaccinated are, Jimmy Kimmel made the joke, unvaccinated are bad people that should be left to die outside of the, the hospital. And everybody clapped and laughed like it was funny because he put it a certain way. If you, if you take horse goo, that he meant ivermectin by that, you should be left out there to die and stuff like that. Like a comic, a comedian say that on national television. Everything, everybody laughed, not everybody obviously, but a lot of people laughed and he was not called out for saying something as atrocious as that. Right. Isn't that crazy? Right. Like the media is controlling the, the narrative, not because it's in your best interest, not because they believe in the cause, it's because they, first of all, in collusion with the government, because they think they're going to make money that way. And second of all, because those are, that's what they, clickbait is what they live on right now and their death roll into nothingness. But we can go on and some people will disagree with me that 
that shit is, is necessary. Some people will agree with me, like the lockdowns, the, the vaccines. I'm all for the vaccine. I'm vaccinated and it does reduce the severity of symptoms if you get COVID. That is not what was said at first when they got out. When they got out, it was like, you get the vaccine, we go back to normal because no more trans, uh, transmission, no more of that. I know, and you're going to say that's never what they promised. Yes, it is. The idea was like, we take the vaccine, life goes back to normal. Guess what? We're taking the vaccine, li life is not back to normal. Holland just proved it. I was in the US, it's the same thing. A lot of people are vaccinated. LA was a, was a ghost town compared to what, what I knew it to be. So my problem again is not against the vaccine, is what the vaccine was sold as. It was sold as a solution that would stop the spread. Sorry, I had to change the camera angle. Uh, my, the camera died and I'm not about to stop on that one. So um, <clears throat> yeah, so the, the cost on small businesses we haven't even seen yet. The cost on economy we haven't seen. There was, a, we are talking about that with Janina, like there was uh, in, the, in the Senate, in the Holland equivalent of Senate Parliament, right last year, there was a bill that was uh, proposed in order to study the economical consequence, consequences of the lockdowns and then all the measurement and it was denied which means we could not even study the consequences of the lockdown it was uh, financial so uh, on the economy and on uh, depression and things like that we, they were not they aren't even going to study it in holland my guess is because they know what the how big of a problem it's going to be what do you think the effects on kids are going to be to have masks like that for two years online education no socialization we know full well what what that what happens to kids that are not allowed to socialize for a while, right? This is why homeschooling was always lo uh, looked down upon uh, amongst a lot of people because the socialization aspect of school was so important, right? Uh, and if you had done that to your kid for two years, your kid would have been taken away from you. But it's a government doing it and we all seem to be, not all of us, seem to be fine with it. And it's not even the like, yeah, but it was necessary for, you know, to keep kids out of school in order for the virus not to transmit, even though we know kids are not touched by it. Or like, you know, there's been like, what, 500 uh, kids that died of COVID and they all had uh, health issues on top of it, which I don't want anybody to die, but it's going to happen. Welcome to life. Obesity kills plenty of people. Uh, so diseases in all over the world, like paludism, stuff like that, still kills a lot of uh, problem, problem with clean water. It's not like we care that much about those types of deaths before. Is that because it's happening to us versus some people in Africa? I don't know. But what I know is uh, before the pandemic, you could even say that obesity was bad for your health without being call it, called the fattest, right? Uh, the number of times that I say obesity is a, good, is a bad idea, like literally had people saying like, how dare you say that? Uh, you're beautiful no matter what, even though I didn't say beautiful, I said health, whatever. So the consequences of COVID, we don't know about. And that's, the point. And that's what really scares me is, if you're telling me it's necessary to save the world, I'm like, okay, but it's a maybe, right? We don't know. How come we're not taking the measure necessary to know? How come we're not studying the effects of COVID on <clears throat> addictions. In the US, the number one killer of people from 18 to 45 is drug overdose because of the fentanyl problem. I don't see us locking borders over that. And it's still 100,000 people who died. That's a large number, right? Uh, the effects of the lockdowns on alcoholism, on anxiety, on depression, on kids. They, what happens when they turn teenagers? Like, we don't know any of that. And that's really what scares me is the fact that we don't know and it's been two years and we're not any closer of knowing so we're just pushing that ball down the road and then when we pay the price then what right because i'm not saying i'm i'm right i'm not saying that i know that lockdowns were a bad idea i'm saying we don't know but they don't know either governments impose lockdowns on you not necessarily knowing if this was the best situation and they're going like, well, they didn't know. Okay, they didn't know for the first, what, two weeks, two months, six months, one year? Because they keep doing it. Like they had lockdown over Christmas in Holland. Why? Because they didn't want people coming in. 
The, the, I don't think this has to do anymore with the virus now. Like we're going to enter a phase where this has to do with obedience. As my story about uh, Janina that I'm going to continue relates to, I know there is nothing I can say that will convince you either way. So this is not the type of, I'm not trying to tell you lockdowns were a bad idea, we shouldn't vaccinate or any of that. What I'm trying to say is that we don't know the consequences of having such a top-down decision on a system as complex as Western society. Right? We took for granted that the Chinese response was the correct one when it came to the lockdown and then when it came to the QR code and stuff like that. Like we are taking our orders, ideas, from the CCP. That scares me. We have no idea of the consequences of what we're doing. And what scares me the most is we don't express that. Like we all going through lockdown vaccination, like it's such an obvious thing that everybody needs to be forced to do, whether they like it or not, because that's that's the best. That's the best way to go. Do we know that? Like, do you know for sure? Like, is there any other way? Well, Sweden had a different idea from the lockdown and then right now they just went like, well, we have to learn to live with COVID. I would think two years ago, that's what they, they announced saying, like everybody's going to get it, which is what Omicron seems to be doing. So you need to develop the antibodies. Turns out natural immunity is a very strong thing. Uh, and then you're going to have to learn to live with it because people die. And isn't that what's happening? Like, like always, like, um, and should we get vaccinated if it lowers the symptoms? Definitely, but we should protect the people at risk. Again, I'm not trying to convince you because I can't do that. But what I'm trying to say is that we don't know any of the consequences, the true consequences, because it's going to take years for it to pop out. But my guess is there's going to be some very nasty ones that we are not talking about, we're not looking at. So what can we do about it? And that's what I want to talk about, because honestly, like I'm not a policy guy, I'm not a politician. I can see patterns very well, right? Especially when it comes to human being. My thing is the human condition and I'm good with patterns. And I can tell you like what the media is doing is extremely dangerous. And so Janena is in Holland right now and she's so shocked by how rude people are to her going like you're not from here where are you from why do you have an accent why do you talk slow and she can't get anywhere without a qr code being vaccinated and can't get it for another six days and when she went to the the government officials for that they're like oh we're busy it's you. and you know what it is it's, it's your problem you should have done that before but i'm like but i come from outside there's well one more reason to to be wrong then and, and that's the thing is they're using those qr codes now to st to start keeping track of you obviously because now you have a qr code for Holland and one international when you have to provide even more papers and stuff like that which means everybody has access to your personal information isn't that isn't that worse than the covid could it be potentially worse than the pandemic itself that's up to you to decide i think so but Anyway, I've seen, I've studied enough history to see what totalitarian states do. But anyway, uh, the, the point is that I want to make is none of that, because again, there's nothing I can say that will change your mind. But the, it's the way we interact with each other. Understand that the media right now is pushing you toward looking at other people that are not like you a certain way. Right, that's where they make their money on the clickbait and stuff like that. What they're doing right now is they're capitalizing on that free-flowing anxiety that I talked about on the podcast to make you look at other people as enemies or at least the root cause of the problem. So you had vaccinated versus unvaccinated. If you're not unvaccinated, if you are unvaccinated, if you're not vaccinated, you're the reason the virus is spreading, even though scientifically it's completely incorrect. But if you look, that's kind of what they're saying overall. That's how they're making you feel, right? Because it's going to be, it's almost going to make you feel better at first because there's a group of people that can be blamed for what's happening, right? Instead of government, that is that big scary thing. There's a group of people that is responsible for your lockdown. So it's going to make you, one, feel morally superior to them by being vaccinated and they're not. Second of all, it allows you to point the finger at someone, which is always easier than realizing that the reason this is happening is because we got soft in the Western society and then we've been flirting with totalitarian mindset forever. And then that this is coming back. And instead of seeing how dangerous this is, 
it's much easier to point your finger at someone else which by the way we did in world war ii look where that took us um so it, that's what really scares me the most is how much they're pushing us to look at others as different you're gonna this is why we have countries you know in the first place so you're gonna see that in europe you have a qr code different in france than different in holland or whatever so now you need an international one but you get it from your own city you, you know what i mean like they're making it harder to travel they're making it easier to judge others and as i was saying that gun that you're pointing at others will point toward you at some point that is the way this works it always does that gun always goes back to point at yourself do not treat and i'm i'm not telling you i'm begging you that do not treat others differently because of covid because of the media because of the qr code because have you seen it's not about being vaccinated because janina is vaccinated it's about having the qr code the fact that she doesn't have the qr code she went to a gym not going to name them even though i want to they went to a gym and the dude was so rude to her when he said he was like you know how come you speak different or whatever oh you're from outside and that, even though she, again she was she was born and grew up in that city she only she didn't even leave that city she left that city not even a year ago not even a year ago nine months ago she left and she's already an outsider and the dude was being rude to her saying like you can take it for a month she's like oh, i'm only here for two weeks he's like uh, i'll just pay a session it was like that's not smart of you you speak slow he was insulting to her the re and the, when he she he heard that she didn't have the qr code he asked her to leave like full blown like by the way for, it's a horrible business idea uh first of all but second of all like and then I don't know that people were that rude before the pandemic. I don't think so. I've been, I was in Holland for three years. Yes, people are rude, but not like that. And I see it everywhere. The second I was in the US and I show my phone to someone and he had to take like a three, three steps back just in case, just in case what? I have a mask, I'm fully vaccinated. Otherwise I wouldn't be able to, to be in. They are pushing you to look at others a certain way. Don't let them don't be more rude to people less human just because they they fit a different tribe than yours right we are tribal creatures that's the fact but we live in a huge society that requires us to try to go past it is that easy no it's very very hard to do but we had kind of reached a consensus as a society that we were trying to judge people based on their values more than where they're from ethnicity you know social class things like this and they are pushing the worst button of all which is tribalism that's what they're doing and they're doing it to make money it's not, they're not doing it for your in your best interest the media is doing it to make money the government is doing it because they like power over you and that's it so that qr code thing do you really think is going to stop there right that they're not going to keep it in some way shape or form i say i hope i'm wrong but I think they will keep it. I think social credits in Europe, here I come. Like Janina cannot do anything, right, in Holland right now, even though she's fully vaccinated, right? And yes, because people could shoot the vaccine card and all that stuff, but exactly, you see where this is going? As humans, like we would have thought this is, five years ago, this would have been an insane idea. And, but again, like all this, the plus and minuses of COVID and whatever it's happening and the governments are in control. So uh, this is why I came here, honestly, because this is exactly what I foresaw, that type of behavior. What scared me the most out of the pandemic is not what the governments are doing, because I expected them to do that. It's the way people are reacting. That's what scares me. And, but the consequences for you to fall into that trap are humongous. You might not feel it now, but sooner or later, the lockdowns will stop, the pandemic will go away. The way you treated people right now at this time, that won't go away. It will always be within you. And you might go back to being happy and, start, and express remorse, but trust me, that gun that, you're, that is getting sharper right now, even though a gun cannot be sharp, but you get the idea. That gun that is getting sharper right now, will some of it will stay and it will turn toward, toward you. And when it does, it's going to be ugly if he hasn't already, right? Don't let them change the way you treat people. That is, that will be the greatest failure of the pandemic. And that one is up to us. We get to treat people 
as humans, as people, we get to do that just because the media is pushing a certain way, just because you can't get an unbiased source of news just because the government is bullshitting you all day and telling you this and telling you that. Like, I understand how confused we all are from the situation. But let me tell you, the consequences are coming of our behavior, right? This is a price Western society probably, we've probably been using that credit card too much anyway on a number of things, but that price is coming. If there's one thing we can change is the way we treat people. Do not let them make you treat people differently. It will crush you so bad, right? Don't be more rude to people because you think they're vaccinated or not, stuff like that. This is a bad idea. Sooner or later, you will falter on something and that gun will turn to you. And anxiety, depression, alcoholism, so forms of addiction in a way, uh, all that stuff is coming. Like we will pay such a steep price for the way we behave. Try to limit that. Like just because the price is not obvious yet because those things take years to develop doesn't mean it's not coming. Trust me, it is. The one you can control is the way you treat people. Treat people kindly because most people are treating people worse. Like this is what Janina is going through right now in Holland just because she left nine months ago because her accent is different because she doesn't speak Dutch as fast as nine months ago. And I know that because when I, the first time when I went back to, to France, like I couldn't speak French anymore. It's funny how fast you actually lose that. You don't lose the cap your own language, but you lose the, you know, the ease with it, the speed, stuff like that. That's what you lose. Let me check that I'm on. Yep. That's what you lose. Uh, and people can hear it right away. Can hear it if you, like, oh, how come you say it this way? Like you're stumbling on your word or whatever. They can tell you're a foreigner. That's what they keep asking you. Are you a foreigner? Um, they can tell right away. And that's okay. That's completely okay. You, you go like, oh, you don't live here, which is a completely fine response to have. It's like, oh, funny. You're obviously Dutch and you don't live here. Where do you live? Curiosity, completely normal. What comes next is the difference. It's not, oh, you're not here. It's like, you're different. You're not from here. And then I'm going to treat you more rudely because of that. And that's just not in Holland. That's everywhere. And that's being pushed upon you. Like this, how do you think the CCP got in power? Like Mao came about. The first thing they did was splitting people into group and then kill them. This is always what they do. So do I think they're going to start killing us? I don't hope so. But the internment camps in Australia scare me. The way New Zealand shut itself off from the world scares me because the businesses are going to pay the price. You see that on the supply chain. All that stuff scares me. Uh, but what scares me most of all is that we are treating each other differently because of it. Like, and this is so dangerous to you. Bottom line, don't let them do that. Okay, and then um, I will do the next podcast will be on the seminars that I did because it was a great experience. And then I will have my co-host back in uh, two weeks. Bye, everybody.